Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to find the first Monday of the month in Microsoft Access. You'll give it a date, and it will tell you what the first Monday of the month that that date falls in happens to be. And of course, you can use the same technique to find the first any day of the month, like the first Wednesday, the first Sunday, and so on. Today's question comes from Alyssa in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, one of my silver members. Alyssa says, I need to be able to find the first Monday of any given month to determine what the first work day is. How can I do this in Access? And then a little bit later on for the members in the extended cut, I'm going to expand upon that. Tika from Shelby, North Carolina, a Platinum member, asks, is there any way you can find the nth weekday of any given month? For example, the first Monday or the fourth Wednesday. Okay, so we're going to take the first example of just finding the first Monday, and then we're going to expand it any day of the week and any iteration of that, the third, the fourth, the fifth even, okay? Now, before we get started, there's a couple of prerequisites. This, unfortunately, requires a little bit of intro to VBA, okay? So if you haven't watched my intro to VBA class, go watch it. It's only a couple of lines of code. Don't be scared of VBA. Once you learn a little tiny bit of programming, your databases get really, really powerful, and some things you can only do with VBA, okay? Now, I did look around the web. I did a bunch of Googling, right? And I tried to find just a purely mathematical way to calculate the first Monday of the month. And I found a few functions, but some of them don't work 100% of the time. They fail in leap years, for example. And I just happened, I, I found one that I really, really liked. And unfortunately, I put a leap year date in it and it didn't work. So I'm going to stick to what I know using VBA and a loop. You should also know date serial, which allows you to build a date based on its components. You give it the year, month, day. All right. And the weekday function, which returns a number one through seven for what day of the week it happens to be. That's how we can find if something is a Monday, for example. So if you haven't watched those videos, go watch those first. If not, I'll explain date, serial, and weekday as we get to them. And before we get started, a little tiny bit of advertising. I cover all of the date time functions in detail in my Access Expert 27 and 28 classes. Okay, so if you really want to learn how to work with dates and times and access, those are the two classes for you. There's a link right there. I'll put it down in the link section too. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template database. This is a free download off my website. You can go grab a copy if you want to and watch the video where I build this so you understand how this Hello World button works. A little tiny bit of VBA. You click on the button and it gives you Hello World. This is just a little status box. I think this is better than popping up message boxes all the time. So I built this into the template. Okay, so let's start out by putting a text box on this form so that I can enter a date. All right, we'll put a date here like that in the label. Slide that over. Let's make that white so we can actually see it. All right, make that a little bit bigger. Okay, let's put, uh, let's put today's date in here. We're going to go over here to the properties. The name is going to be my date. Don't use the word date. Remember, date is a reserved word. It's a function. Okay. Let's format that as a short date. That'll give us the date picker button that pops up too. Let's go to data and put equals today's date in there, just like that. Okay, so now let's see what we got. Close that, open it back up again, and there we go. Just today's date, you can click on it. Oh, see, sometimes that little, that little pop-up helper button hides off the edge of the form. So we're going to bring this away from the margin just a little bit like that. All right, save it, take one more peek at it. There we go. Now I can just pick a date with the date picker. Okay, let's uh, make these a little bit bigger. Right up here. All right, find first Monday. And then we'll take the status box, make that a little bit bigger so I can actually see what's in it. Okay, all right, save that. Let's go into the code editor, right click on the button, go to build event, and that should bring this up. All right, I don't want a status hello world. And if you don't know what status is, it's my own little function. Right, for putting stuff in the status box. I'll show you how to build that in the template video. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, okay, I've got a date. I want to find the first day of that month and then check to see if it's Monday. If not, add a day to it. Check to see if it's Monday. If not, add a day to it, and eventually I'll get to a Monday. That's how we're going to find the first Monday. So dim D as a date. That's a variable. Right, so D is a variable that can hold a date value. Let's start at the first day of the month. How do I get the first day of the month? We're going to use the date serial function. Date serial says 
Give me the pieces of the date that you want, the year, the month, and the day, and I'll return an actual date value. So we're going to say D equals date serial. Now, if you want to just type in today's values, okay, I could do 2021 comma 7 comma, what's the 26th, 26. All right, and that would be valid, and that would return an actual date of July 26, 2021. Okay, but I don't want to hard code that in there. I want to use the values from this field right here, the my date field. So I'm going to break this up into its pieces like this. Watch this. It's going to be year of my date. That'll return 2021, right? Comma, month of my date. That'll return a seven. Comma, and now I want the first day of the month. So put a one there. See that? So no matter what date I have in that box, I'm going to get the first day of that month, and we're going to put that in D. Okay? Now I want to check to see if D is a Monday. So I'm going to use the weekday function. And if not, I'm going to loop and add 1 to D. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that in access, a value of a day is equal to 1. Right? So if I take, if I take January 1st and add 1 to it, I get January 2nd. So I'll use a little while loop. While weekday of D. Right, that'll return a number from 1 to 7. 1 is Sunday. All right. Well, that's not equal to VB Monday. What's VB Monday? VB Monday is a constant that Access knows. Every day of the week has a constant. VB Sunday, VB Monday, VB Tuesday, VB Wednesday, and so on. I make a little song for it. Okay. And if you want to put comments in your code here, I should probably do that, right? First day of selected month. Okay. And here we're going to say uh, loop while D is not Monday. Okay, now, if this is true, if weekday D is not Monday, I'm going to add 1 to the date. D equals day plus 1, all right? Add 1 to date. And then, while well, end. That's it. So this loop is going to run until it finds the first Monday. That's it. That's all, you, that's all you need. Like I said, three lines of code. All right, actually, technically, uh, yeah, we could get away with probably three lines of code here, but I like to, I like to phrase it like that. Okay. Then we're going to say status, the first Monday is Anna D. And that's it. Let's get rid of some of these empty blank lines here. Save it. Come back out here. Close that down. Open it back up. And click. First Monday is 7-5. And let's verify it by looking at the little date picker here. Yep, 7-5 is the first Monday. Let's change the date. Let's go to August. Pick August 19th, for example. Click. Boom. 8-2 is the first Monday. Say 8-2. Perfect. Let's try a leap year. Let's go back to... Uh, actually, I like to always try 2-1, um, 2,000. Even though 2,000 is not a leap year, I always like to try that. 2-7. Let's see. 2-7 is the first Monday. All right. Let's try um, 1994, for example. Go. 2-7. Okay, good. Let's try 2-29, uh, 1990. And go. Oh, not valid. So 229, 1990 is not a valid date. Let's see, 228. Yeah, beautiful. How about 92? Okay. Good. All right, looks, looks like it's working. It's checking out. So that is how, with a little loop, right, right there, you can figure out the first day, the first Monday of any month. And again, I've seen some calculations online that, you know, are just math equations, and they will be more efficient if you use them in a query. All right, if you could do this purely mathematical, then uh, then that will be faster in a, in a, if you got a big query and you want to calculate lots of them. But, uh, yeah, I, I tried a couple of them, and I, I put some dates in, and then they just didn't work right. They didn't take all dates into consideration. And if you're going to go through that, you might as well just do a little loop, Okay. I tend to find that looping with VBA solutions, I mean, this works 100% of the time. There's, there's no date that's going to not work with this. You start at the first, you count up till you find a Monday. That's it. Okay, so for the members, extended cut, we're going to calculate the nth weekday. So if you want the fifth Sunday or the third Thursday, all right, very similar technique. We're going we're gonna to loop till we find it. And then we're going to create a function out of it. So we'll make a global function you can use anywhere in your database, not just necessarily on this form. That's all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, and gold members can download these databases that I build.
How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access, I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from accesslearningzone.com.